For example, Andrew Tate responding to the situation by saying, so Oh, Andrew Tate, this is deviant, trying to act like he's better, please. I was pretending to be surprised that this fucking tried to fuck a kid. Well, of course. It's all fucking They're fucking deviants. They're weirdos. There's no reason to chop your own fucking dick off unless you're a weirdo. Newsflash! You're weird! I don't know why we're using Andrew Tate or care about his commentary when he's obviously like a bad person and obviously doesn't care about consent, right? There's one thing I'll call April Baker. So listen. I'm me, do my thing, right? Bad boy. I'm about 21, and there's young thing on Facebook, you know. Little sexy, little badass. 16, brother. <laughs> April Baker. That was her name. That was her name. You're hot. So I messaged her. She's like, I'm only 16. I was like, give a f So I pick up April Baker in my Mazda RX-8. Bro, I was banging her, like, looking at her Facebook on the phone, like, just staring at a different face. Cause I had to bang her, but like, I was so disappointed. So from there on out, girls became Aprils. Oh, everyone get, get the f over it. 16's the legal, legal age of consent in the UK. Yeah, shut it's up. Legal, he shut was, up. He was 21, 16 she was 16. Is the age of consent. Get the f over it. How do our reactions, our relationships with things, how do they possibly contribute to more harm than good? And that's what's difficult. It's not difficult being like, I don't like that. That makes me uncomfortable. But it is difficult to ask yourself, is it okay that it makes me uncomfortable or am I the problem? Should it even make me uncomfortable in the first place? Because a lot of people will judge you on how they feel. So if they feel uncomfortable, you're a bad person. But that's not reasonable. That's not okay. Now, it might be okay for them. I'm open with boundaries. You make me uncomfortable. I don't want to engage with you. That's valid. But to go around, create a mob rule, get a person fired or any of these things because you're uncomfortable with them, I think is unnecessary. Now, if the person does something, that's different. With that said, we're going to move into the Ava, um, Chris Tyson story, because I think this kind of moves the, the conversation forward with what I'm trying to say here. We're all in bubbles and we all have a perception of right or wrong. Everyone has been compares, comparing this Ava Chris Tyson story to the Dr. Disrespect story, but I actually think they're incredibly different. But I've also noticed that people are weaponizing it to be pretty anti-trans. And then more than that, people are just dumbing it down. And that's not what we're going to do here. You can go watch somebody else if you watch, watch if you want to watch people dumb down the conversation. But I think there's so much nuance to be had in these conversations and I want to have them. So this is Philip DeFranco covering the Ava Chris Tyson story. And this just gives us a good summary of the story in general. So let's get into it. So Ava Chris Tyson of the Mr. Beast crew is in the middle of a massive scandal right now as she faces allegations that she inappropriately messaged a minor. And while all of this is just now blowing up online, this actually began last month when a little known YouTube channel called Prism42 posted the allegations, right? And in it, he accuses her of starting an online friendship with a 13 year old boy while she was 20, then showing screenshots of several tweets that he claims are between Ava and the minor. And one from 2018, Ava's promoting her Patreon with her allegedly saying, guys, we are so close to our goal, one more Patreon, and I'm releasing my so the two appearing to exchange kissy face and winky face emojis in a thread, and Ava eventually telling the minor directly, I posted some fire news for you, please no share. And there, Prism saying, even if this was just a series of raunchy jokes and no actual nudes were exchanged, in what world is it appropriate for an adult to joke with a kid like this? Prism then showing other screenshots, some in which Ava appears to call the kid dad, as well as another suggesting Ava was sending him Snapchat DMs with adult jokes. And Prism going on to say, when the kid was 16, he met up with Ava as well as Carl Jacobs after taking a camper to the middle of the woods in a quote unquote secluded area. With Prism then saying he interviewed this guy who's now in his 20s and saying he asked if Ava or anyone else on the Beast team ever Today. However, there he notes that the guy fully denied that. It also seemed like they weren't on the same page with at one point Prism saying to him directly, That is highly inappropriate. That should have never happened. I'm sorry if your feelings were hurt in any way, shape, or form. I want you, I want you to know that I don't have any ill intention here against you. And at the end of the day, I the only reason I did any of this and was trying to get this information out is because of genuine concern. He also addressed Mr. Beast and said, I think the work that I see you do is fine work, it's great. He's giving autism. He's given neurodivergent sense of justice. He's giving deep dived, but he's also giving bias and prejudice. I'm gonna assume something bad on Ava's part, bias. Now, here's the thing. Um, there's some overlap here, and again, we're going to go through the nuance. We are never justifying like targeting minors and having intimate relationships with them. The problem is, is there is something that's happening on the internet that I've seen with a lot of people. And I do think there's a lot of stuntedness in the world of the internet. I do think if you're on the internet for too much, you are incredibly stunted. And I think that I see it even in myself. Like not that I'm stunted in the way that I'm about to describe, but kind of where people stay very young on the internet. I stay incredibly young 
on the internet. You know, if you stay up with memes and what words mean, you are literally not aging with your group of people who are outside of this bubble. And this bubble isn't the world. So to some extent, if you're not paying attention to the mainstream and you are going into your niche bubbles, you're going to have weird relationships with people. I know a lot of grown men who play COD or play Fortnite and they play with children. And there's a lot of joking and adult jokes that happen over those microphones. And they're grownups and they're mostly straight men who are interacting with kids in ways that are technically inappropriate. But also... They probably don't think much about it because they're not DMing these kids. They're not thinking about it in a predatory way, but they are being just as inappropriate as Ava's text messages have shown, give or take a couple of details, okay? And so there's something in this that I think is clear, even with Colleen Ballinger, obviously there's something wrong with her, right? Like she's there's something going on, some neurodivergency, some adolescence problem, some something that's causing her to be very, very young and adolescent and also inappropriate. So ultimately inappropriate, right? But to be a predator means to target people with bad intentions, regardless of the moral implications, right? So we need to have like very honest conversations about these things. And I don't think we're really having those. I think we're so afraid, which I don't blame you, of we're so afraid and we want to protect children, but we forget about how to protect them. You know, we want to protect kids from adults who are predatizing them, but we also want to deny our gay kids their existence. It's like you want to protect kids in one way, but not in both ways. And I think we should aim for both ways. But then we should talk about why these things happen in the first place. Now, I personally don't think adults and kids should ever be friends, but I've known circumstances with like mentoring and things like that in which you're not friends. There's a clear power dynamic, but there's also like boundaries that need to come about. Some people call friends, like some people use the word friend differently. I don't think adults and kids should be friends, but I know, and I'll use this as a personal example. I used to run an all age Patreon and I noticed like 15 year olds were coming in and 13 year olds were coming in. And at first it wasn't a big deal. I didn't even think about it. But then these children started telling me about their lives and they came from very bad homes and some criminal activity could have been occurring or whatever, who knows what stories were true or not. And I realized like, oh, as a content creator, I can't have kids on my Patreon like I, I, these kids, you know how kids are. I was the same way as a teenager. I would tell adult stories about my life and there, you don't know what to do as an adult because like you just don't know what to do. So I made my Patreon 18 plus and I told those kids to go kick rocks because I don't want to talk to your parents and I don't want to deal with this. The dilemma, and I think this is probably why I'm glad my audience is adults, is that Mr. Beast and Ava and all these people, they operate around children. They are children content creators. They make content for kids. And so if they're running Patreons, of course there's going to be kids, right? Like, of course. And then the conversation is, as you age and these kids are still staying the same age because it's a new audience, how do you deal with that? And I think that's the problem is like, it is really difficult as a content creator to be like, oh my God, what do I do here? And so I just made my Patreon 18 plus and they have to deal with the legality because when you sign up for Patreon, you have to say, yes, I'm 18. It's that's the only ounce of security I have basically to kids not ending up on my discord. And I'm hoping it works. That's why I put a $10 limit on it. It's why I have a very strict discord because I don't want to deal with your kids. The dilemma is a lot of these guys who are trying to make these big dollars, they do want your kids attention. And then we have to have conversations about content creators making content for kids. So gamers, uh, streamers, Dr. Disrespect, to Ava, to Mr. Beast. These are children audiences. XQC, even maybe Asmin, though I think Asmin probably has older people in his audience, if I'm going to be honest. But I don't know. So I think there's something here that's a little complicated. But let's keep going with the story. This is Philip DeFranco. Um, good charity. Um... I don't have anything against you other than like the fact that, you know, you seem to be okay with having someone that says they're the opposite gender in your kids. Whatever, okay, you know, so he's anti-trans. So he's a transphobe. And I don't trust a transphobe to try to ex like find out a predator. So first, I don't trust them because they're a transphobe. Like I think people who are transphobic will always think trans people are predators and I can't trust you. You are a bad source because your bias and prejudice is clear. He just said it. I don't know why you want, you know, someone who thinks they're the opposite gender. What? Well, fine. But if you're a transphobe, I can't trust your information. So that already taints the story. See, with the doctor disrespect, 
Story, he admitted it. He full on came out and said, I 100% texted a minor. Okay, so we don't need to, there's no ifs or ands. So the reason these stories are different, I know a lot of people are trying to say they're the same. They're not the same. Dr. Disrespect when his, was in his 30s and married. He knew it was a minor and hit them up and he admitted to it. Okay, he called it a mistake. So not the same. Okay, Ava has a Patreon, which is all ages, which brings in kids and the humor stays the same, which exists in a lot of straight heterosexual bubbles, right? Now, I'm not saying Ava's innocent. I'm saying there probably was something inappropriate, but I don't know if it was sexual inappropriate or humor inappropriate. And there is a difference, but let's keep watching. Video largely went unnoticed until this week when a creator by the name of Brion posted another video recapping Prism 42's claim. Right in it, Brion stresses that he can't confirm Prism's claims 100%, saying, It's all allegations. You know, take the things that you see here with a grain of salt. We don't know if 100% Chris is a or or whatever. We just know that Chris has done some really weird. Also, I'm really annoyed that everybody is misnaming her as Chris instead of Ava. And I don't get why they keep doing that. Are they all transphobic? Is this like a transphobe signal? Is this a dog whistle for transphobia? And I love that Philip DeFranco wrote the Mr. Beast Ava Chris Tyson scandal. That way, like the algorithm would pick up his story without discrediting Ava's uh, identity. And also he genders her correctly throughout his stories. But I don't know why these guys keep calling her by her dead name, I guess. Like, it's weird weird things in his past over on Twitter. And with that, you had Brion honing in on a tweet where the kid asked Ava about her addiction. Like his See, that's confusing to on me. On Twitter. And with that, you had Brion. Chris, does she know about your addiction? First of all, addiction is very specific and you probably don't have one. But if you do, that would be interesting. It's probably not a hand addiction. Okay. Brion honing in on a tweet where the kid asked Ava about her hand addiction. Like, it's really odd that a 14-year-old knows that a 21-year-old has a hand addiction and these two happen to be friends. Like, why the Cam Cam says on Twitter, it's Ava Chris Tyson. So it's still Ava. Ava updated it and said, I'd prefer to go by Ava than Chris. As far as I checked last. The hell would you tell somebody who is this age or frankly a minor weird sexual shit in the things that you're into? And then sort of separate, but also connected to this whole. If you listen to Gamer Boys, there's a TikToker that pretends to be a girl and plays video games with these people. All these people are super all these people are making grape jokes. They're saying a lot of things. You don't know if you're talking to a kid. Like at the end of the day, if Ava knew she was talking to a kid, then the question comes into play. How should streamers interact with their communities if they know if they have kids in their audience? What if I read a username? And even though my analytics say you guys are mostly adults, if not all of you, like I, I think I don't even know if it says I have any minors in my audience, though I'm sure there's a couple. Do I what if I interacted with the comment section? Like, should I interact with it less because it could be a minor? That's a question to be asked. And also, I don't think minors should be on Patreon. I don't even understand why is Patreon not always 18 plus? It's a very confusing, like, why should kids, why are kids giving money to content creators anyway? You should be saving it for college. I don't even know why we're taking money from kids in the, in Patreon. That happened through Patreon, I think is like really important to recognize, right? Story in recent days, we've seen a lot of people screenshotting what they say are old tweets from Ava where she expresses an interest in there's this anime style of either drawing young looking or underage girls, usually in a suggestive or outright explicit way. There you also have the likes of Keemstar writing Chris Tyson supported the cartoon CP artist Shadman that drew my daughter at age eight in a sexual manner, saying this is a known fact. And First of all, Keemstar's a piece of shit. So, Chris, so Keemstar had a, this guy Shadman drew Keemstar's daughter in a way, which I think is bullshit, right? Super gross. Honestly, there should be a penalty for it. I think there should be a penalty for drawing real people in a civilized manner, period. I think you should be, you can be, I think you should be able to be penalized, in my opinion, if they did not consent to it, obviously. So like AI, works of art, if you're, if you're drawing real people, I think honestly, guys, can I be real with you? I think you should be able to be sued for fan fiction. I do. I think you civilizing real actors and actresses and putting them in disgusting situations so you can get your rocks off, you should pay a fine. You should pay a $20,000 fine. Maybe that's too much. A $1,000 fine. I just think it's gross. And you just stop it. It's fucking weird. I know if you're kids, I get it. Okay, fine. After 18. Because kids have their fantasies, whatever. Okay, when you're over the age of 18, you should not be taking real people and putting them into your weird fan fiction. Okay, it's just fucking gross. Don't do that. I think like this is gross. Okay, I hate Keem, but that's fucked up. If somebody did that to my kid, bro, I'd start... This is where I'd go into activism and I would start putting it on the books to get this man fined, fired, or something. Because that's 
gross, dude. Can you imagine taking someone's kid and making art out? I would slap the fuck out of you figuratively. That's gross, bro. Actually, I kind of like Asmongold's take on this. I don't think minors should be on the internet, period. In, in a traditional sense, like interacting with people. I think you should be able to watch, but I don't think you should be giving money to people as a minor. And I certainly don't think you should be building parasocial relationships and like a really destructive way. I think you should learn how to have balance with it. But like, I, you know, I think there's something there that's probably better for society. Obviously not better for your wallets. They should be able to watch without comments. Now YouTube has this where if you're under 18, you can't comment. Like channels that are just for kids, there's no comment section. Adding privately, me and Chris Tyson even had a conversation about this roughly a month ago as it still upsets me. This is not misinformation, this is a fact. And adding, as the owner of Drama Alert, I can tell you there has been misinformation surrounding Chris Okay, hold Tyson's on though. They're saying Ava supported the content creator, but this comment his, his, here says this is misinformation. There's no evidence she commissioned this piece. Well, who knows if she commissioned, obviously she didn't commission the piece. But I'm assuming she just liked the artist. Sorry, I just saw that comment. I want to point it out. Information, this is a fact. And adding, as the owner of Drama Alert, I can tell you there has been misinformation surrounding Chris Tyson today on Twitter. However, this above is 100% true. Just like this old tweet from Chris shown here. It's 100% true and authentic. So this tweet by Chris says, nothing gets my knob off cranky, uh, a cranking like some lolly. But I don't know the context. It was 2016. It says the tweet is suspended, like the one that Ava was replying to. Twitter, however, this above is 100% true. Just like this old tweet from Chris shown here, it's 100% true and authentic. But then jumping back to Brion's video. P.S. I do think teenagers should be on the internet. They shouldn't be interacting with it. Like they should be watching it and consuming and learning, but they shouldn't be interacting with it. I think the interaction is the problem. The problem isn't that teenagers are watching YouTube. The problem is, is they're interacting with YouTube and Instagram and all of these things. Patreon should start by not letting kids be on Patreon. That's where they should start. Yo, he asked Ava to respond to all of this saying. Chris has to say something. Chris can't be quiet like, like Chris has been for the longest time. This needs to be something that Chris is going to address head on like right now. But that said, so far as of recording, Ava hasn't outright responded to these allegations. Though reportedly last month. That little bubble that popped up just now is an update. There will be an update to the end at this at the end of the story. She did delete all of her tweets from her account. We also have- Okay, so she deleted her Twitter. Haven't seen any comment from Mr. Beast regarding the situation either. Though close to that, you did have Keemstar tweeting. Mr. Beast connected me directly to Lava, the alleged Chris Tyson groomed victim. Lava said, I was not groomed by Chris Tyson. Also saying, I did not meet Chris Tyson by myself. I met Chris and the Mr. Beast crew with my family present. And saying, I ran a Discord with Chris Tyson when I was 13 and edgy, inappropriate jokes were said. That's- Okay, so this is important because I don't know if you know this. Discord has official Discord accounts. So I didn't know this and somebody explained it to me. So Discord has official Discord accounts and a lot of them are 13 plus. Do you know the furry account on Discord is 13 plus? Do you know that there are plenty of Discords with adults and children on them because plenty of people make it work? This is not very uncommon. Like I said myself, my Discord's 18 plus. I don't want your kids on there. But some discords are for communities and communities involve all ages, okay? If you go to cons, if you go to anime cons, if you go to Comic-Con, it's all ages, right? So it's not that weird because adults and kids have plenty of events that both overlap. Lots of adults like anime, lots of kids like anime. They're gonna be at the same events. Okay, fine. So on this, this is important because the victim, allegedly, because again, there's no proof that Ava said anything technically inappropriate, though I'll get into that in a second because I don't know if Phil's gonna go over it. So if he doesn't, I'll bring it up. There's something here that's interesting where the quote victim themselves are saying like nothing happened. I met up at that campsite with my family, people were there and I ran a discord. Okay, so that's allegedly their perspective, fine. It. And also, if you go to that person's Twitter, they wrote, Chris did nothing wrong. What's actually disgusting is you guys twisting things and making me a victim. As well as, can you guys help me counter all these lies? Chris's messages to me were sent in public Discord servers, groups, but everyone is framing it as if it was one-on-one. -on -one. Chris literally did nothing wrong. And okay, this is important. Keep this in mind for later. So the, the alleged victim is saying um, everything was in public. Nothing was one-on-one. -on -one. Because a lot of the screenshots I saw did make it look like personal, like, messages. So then it got confusing, right? And then another tweet saying, this situation takes away from children who are actively being exploited every day online. So there, you had a lot of people kind of either not buying that or countering that by saying something along the lines of what Moist Critical said during a live stream. And then one of the, uh, like, the main person being talked about came forward saying they weren't groomed and that it wasn't weird. But the, the whole thing is... If you were groomed, you're probably not going to be super aware of it. And from the messages I saw, that shit is completely unacceptable to be saying to a child under under any circumstances. 
And then I saw people saying it was a group chat, but an adult being in a group chat with children and then still saying edgy or inappropriate shit is still unacceptable. This statement is very important. And this is where the nuance comes in. I agree with what Charlie is saying, but does he understand what he is saying? Because every COD lobby, every gaming bubble, most of the thing that, things that happen online where kids and adults overlap with hobbies, all of that would go away. This is not as easy as you think it is. There is so much overlap and most of these are straight dudes in these communities making very inappropriate jokes with kids, making friends with them, adding them on their little Overwatch friend list so they can play games with them later with probably no ill intentions. But the dilemma is when you've got kid hobbies and adult hobbies that overlap, what do you do? This is why I say there's a stuntedness to online communities that, you know, I even experience myself. There's like a stuntedness. There's like an immaturity level. It keeps us young. If we're playing games, if our hobbies are hobbies that also attract children, then what do we do in our communities? It's why I don't join forums. It's why I'm like pretty isolated in that in a good way, because I just don't want to end up talking to some 15 year old on a forum about anime when I don't have to. But also, who am I to say you shouldn't play COD with a 15 year old who's an amazing pro gamer? I don't know, it's none of my business. So the problem is, and I think this is important, there is a difference between being groomed, there is a difference between inappropriate jokes, there is a difference between being a predator, and there is a difference between being a victim, and there is a difference between, like there's a difference between all of these things. So I don't think adults and kids should be friends in my personal opinion. I think it's appropriate to have mentorships. I think it's appropriate to have teacher-student relationships. I think it's inappropriate for friends, meaning peers, to exist in minor children and like adults. Now, in our third conversation after this will be about where is the age, what age should consent come in and has that plan? Because that's a very hard conversation. When we're having these conversations, I think there's a lot of, I agree with Charlie. But also, how do you stop that? Where do we start? Where does it end? But I agree, children and adults, we should find a way for them not to interact in, in that kind of way. But then how do we do that? But I think this is a learning. This is what we have to learn how to do, right? Okay, here we go. Like that, like, like there's no context that makes it better. Right, and so online with this, we see just so many different reactions, right? Some just outright condemning Ava. You also had a former member of the Mr. Beast crew saying Jimmy knew. Though again, others saying when you were a minor, you wouldn't be aware of what was happening. You also had others going after Prism and Brion for misgendering Ava throughout the videos, which then connected to that, you had many people saying they're scared shitless that these allegations against Ava are just gonna turn into cannon fodder to scapegoat the entire trans community. Saying things like, let's be clear. I think it's bullshit that minority communities have to face this very big reality of bubble think, which Hank brought up in his original video that we covered, that one person represents a group when it's a minority, but when it's a majority, that one person only represents themselves. And that fucking sucks. It sucks that Dr. Disrespect doesn't get to represent all men, but maybe he should. How would you feel if we decided Dr. Disrespect represents all men? How would you feel? That'd be pretty fucking shitty. In the same way that it's shitty to assume that Ava represents all trans people. That's pretty fucking shitty. Do you want me to go around saying that if one man does something, it represents all men? No, but that's basically what you're saying. And because it's a minority community, you think that makes sense. And that's exactly what Hank's point was, okay? When we were talking about the shooter. The shooter for Trump was a white guy and they got to figure out his identity so they know who to blame. Just blame him. Just blame that singular person. Unless they declare an association or an allegiance to a group, you can just blame him because they're the person who did it. The Ava Chris Tyson allegations are not a trans issue. It is in fact a content creator issue. So many people- I do think it's a content creator issue to an extent. And I think that that's, it's really hard to know how to toe the line. Like to be, okay, this is so psychologically interesting. Guys, do you know? Okay, this is gonna, I'm gonna just let you in. I'm gonna pop the bubble a little bit. Even with adult audiences, it is hard for them not to assume they're closer to you as a content creator than they are. That's how crazy it is. Even with adults, it's really hard because you don't know why they're watching you. You, For you in your head, you're just like, la, 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 la. And for them, they're thinking, oh my God, I talked to this content creator. Do you know it's been recommended? It's been recommended to me not to read your names out and just to say chat. Because if I say your names, it sends a signal into your brain that says Brittany saying my name. But that feels dehumanizing to me because like, uh, I feel like, oh, we should make like, oh, I know this content creator. I know this username. I know this username. But it creates that thing in your brain that goes ding. I'm special. When you guys request like say happy birthday to me, that's parasociality. 
Why would it matter if your content creator knows it's your birthday or like needs to shout you out? But I think that's beautiful. I love saying happy birthday. I don't like being, you know, forced into saying it, but I love saying happy birthday. What a great thing. I love celebrating my birthday with you guys. It's fun. But also it happens even to grownups. The point is it sends that signal to your brain. that, like, oh, do you remember the controversy with Mr. Girl and Destiny? How Mr. Girl was like, you can't keep telling people you love them. It sends a message to them. And that would happen sometimes where like destiny orbiters would think they were closer to him or he would think they were he was closer to them, which is very ironic, you know, and it would send the wrong message. The dilemma is that this is a job and there is too much at risk. And ultimately, even though you would hope your audience was like capable, all it takes is for two, five, ten people to fuck it up. And then you get a stalker and then you get a pipe bomb put into a package and sent to your front door. I just watched a Ray William Johnson story about this. It's a whole thing. So again, when we're having like this conversation, it's not just about kids. It's also about adults because adults are interacting with these kids and they're interacting with each other and they're getting very comfortable assuming they are very close to people when they're not. But at the same time, as a community member, if we lived in a neighborhood, I would love to wish you happy birthday and I would love to learn your name. And I would love to make you guys cookies and know your allergies, but you're not in my neighborhood and you're not my neighbors. You're my audience. And I'm very grateful to have you here, but you're not my neighbors. And I am just a content creator and I don't know you. Even if I remember things about you, I don't really know you, the sustenance behind the consciousness. But I too, because I'm human, you feel pretty good when someone says your name, when someone acknowledges you, even as a content creator, when we acknowledge each other and we're like, oh my God, I really loved your video. We feel like, oh my God, it gets us really happy because somebody else is acknowledging and somebody else we might think something of. Like, oh, I think really well of this person. I'm so glad they liked my video. And then words of the line cross from just feeling like appreciated to taking it too far. Mimi says, you say on almost every stream, I'm open with boundaries. I've never seen any other content creator I follow be this clear about. Um, you, you've made it super clear to the point where people, if people get inappropriate, they knew better. You know, I, I would love that to be the case, but even I, I contribute to it by being too friendly. I'm a very fucking friendly person and I need to remember to be less friendly, even if it hurts my own feelings. <laughs> it hurts my own feelings when I have to block people or when I have to put my foot down because my desire to like humanize people comes at the cost of my safety a lot of the time. That's the reality of this. So again, when we're talking about this conversation, there is something we're learning about socializing that is new to the internet and new to this, and we're figuring it out and it's gonna be messy. If other YouTubers, look, remember that Destiny literally blew the bridge up with me because he thought we were closer than we were when there was no indication of that. He literally told the internet and the internet was like, I can't believe you betrayed your close friend. What close friend? And he's a YouTuber. He's another content creator. He should know better. I barely know this person. And just because he told me things about his life, he's like, I really trusted her. Why? I mean, I'm a good person. That's why he trusted me because he knows I'm trustworthy. Everyone does. I'm a very trustworthy person. But even a grown up, obviously in his trauma, and he had the audacity to twist the story because he couldn't face himself. He couldn't realize that he was the one with the parasocial relationship in some ways, eh, in some ways. It's hard to, it's hard to say because we knew each other as coworkers, but like, I don't know you. Stop telling people we're close friends. I don't know you, but of course it feels like we're close because, oh, we did all those streams together. Oh, of course you guys are close. Like you guys did all these collabs and you, you went to Miami to collab with him. Is that all it takes for you people to be close with people? That's called work. Do you go to work? Do you go to like literally a, a team meeting at McDonald's and you're like, I'm very close to these people. If you do, that's on you, girl. But some of us are just at work. Okay? Some of us are just doing our jobs. I went to Miami as a work event. Obviously. Okay? So again, when we have these conversations, even other content creators are doing it to each other. And it's weird. It's the weirdest thing. And in hindsight, now it makes sense that it happened the way it did. But bro, even I'm like, what the fuck? How did this happen? Because somebody assumed something that was inappropriate and kept going with the thought because it was too weird not to say it. Because 
Humans are going to human, right? Okay, so let's finish out the story and then we'll have the third most important conversation I want to have with you guys about what should be the age of consent. Because it's a really difficult conversation to have. And again, it's not to actually argue the age of consent. It's to ask ourselves, do we really know why we think the way we think? Okay, here we go. When given a small amount of power, abuse it, and this itself should be studied. With some arguing, we're already seeing the first ripples of that with, for example, Andrew Tate responding to the situation by saying, Oh, Andrew Tate, the sex deviant. Andrew Tate, the sex deviant, trying to act like he's better. Please. I was pretending to be surprised that this fucking tried to fuck a kid. Well, of course. It's all they're fucking sexual deviants. They're weirdos. There's no reason to chop your own fucking dick off unless you're a weirdo. Newsflash, you're weird. We've also seen a number of people drawing. I don't know why we're using Andrew Tate or care about his commentary when he's obviously like a bad person and obviously doesn't care about consent, right? What's the girl named April Baker? What's the girl called April Baker? So listen, I'm me doing my thing, right? Bad boy. I'm about 21 and there's young thing on Facebook, you know, little sexy, little fat ass. 16, brother. <laughs> April Baker. That was her name. That was her name. You're hot. So I messaged her. She's like, I'm only 16. I was like, give a fuck. So I pick up April Baker in my Mazda RX-8. I don't know how she did it. The word catfish came around about five years after me and Andrew were already using April Baker. So they're, they've proudly been using this six-year-old that he had sex with as a constant theme throughout their, their podcast. That's really interesting. Bro, I was banging her, like, looking at her Facebook on the phone, like... Just staring at a different face. Because I had to bang her, but like, I was so disappointed. So from there on out, girls became Aprils. Oh, everyone, get, get the fuck over it. 16 is the legal age of consent in the UK. Grew up in England. What the fuck? Yeah, shut it's up. Legal. He, shut was, up. he was 21, she was 16. Is the age of five. Get the fuck over it. Comparisons between this situation and the one with Dr. Disrespect, with many online saying that those who are quick to comment on the Dr. Disrespect situation have stayed silent on this one. Because of the differences. There are incredible differences between the Ava situation and Dr. Disrespect. And if you don't see the differences, your transphobia is showing. Because there's no way you don't see the difference. With seemingly almost all the creators that were in the recent 50 YouTuber Mr. Beast video uh, getting hit up about this. So in particular, the creators Pokimane and Valkyrie seem to get a lot of the attention. With then, actually, as of this morning, both responded. Pokimane saying, I don't know all the details regarding the Ava situation, but I want to make it clear any inappropriate behavior towards minors is unacceptable, regardless of who you are. Agree, agree. And adding, it's a shame that people will see this as an opportunity to attack the trans community as a whole. One person's actions does not reflect on every single trans person, so please don't view it that way. With Valkyrie hitting a lot of the same notes, but then also adding, Dr. Disrespect is- Oh yeah! Andrew Tate had sex with a minor. He admits it. And Tristan Tate bragged about it too, right? Yeah, why are we even- That's what I'm saying. They've both had sex with people under 18. Because it was illegal in their countries. Okay? It's like legal, I think, in the UK or whatever. Andrew Tate literally talks about it. So I don't even want to hear him talking. That's what I'm saying. These men who are acting like, oh, like, oh, this person's so gross. They want to have sex with kids. You've literally had sex with a child. So, right? According to his own stories, he's literally had sex with a kid. Andrew Tate and I think Tristan Tate, you guys are saying. But I know Andrew Tate told that story about his bottom bitch. See, so I don't even know why he thinks he has anywhere to stand on this. Shut the fuck up. You don't get an opinion on the story, bro. Still gross. And lastly, to the incels that only tagged Pokey and I to speak up, even though everybody did after D did himself, you're weird. Focus your hate towards the pedos for once. And there online, we've seen people arguing both things. Right? Some saying that people went after Dr. Disrespect harder, others saying they went after Ava harder. Now with all this, I do want to know that everything is still developing and growing. Right? We're now seeing others digging up different comments and posts Ava allegedly made. With that including, for example, video of Ava in the past talking about and linking to leaked nudes of Jeanette McCurd. This is an interest. I'm fascinated with this. So Ava leaked like um, Jeanette McCurdy from iCarly, like her nudes got leaked because of an ex-boyfriend, which is really fucked up. This is fascinating. So I am not a person who looks up celebrity nudes. I am uninterested in them. I'm uninterested in nudes that have been leaked. Like I don't want to see them. I'm not interested. I don't think I, I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure I've never seen any of the celebrity nude link le leaks because I just feel really gross looking them up personally. I'm not saying I'm better than you. I'm just saying it doesn't interest me. But for some reason, there's something in the brain that really, really likes looking it up. And I don't know what it is. So lots of people are like Miley Cyrus, Jeanette McCurdy, all these people, their nudes leak and people want to see them. I don't have that in me. It's probably also why this is funny. This is a uh, it's about the taboo. I'm not actually into taboo things like that. I think that's why I have a hard time sensationalizing my life because I'm like, it's just my life. 
But I'm not interested in things that are like, ooh, I'm doing the naughty thing. Like, I don't care. I'm not doing it because it's naughty. I'm doing it because I'm into it. But I'm not into this. And I think there's something in people's brains of like, I have the nudes. I have the nudes. And so they want to see them. But like, I'm not interested in that whatsoever. But I have to say, too many people are into it for me to completely condemn it as all predators. There must be something in the curiosity element of our biology or something that makes, or maybe our psychology, that makes our brains go, I want to see the thing. I want to see the thing. There's got to be something, right? in an old clip, as well as at least one other person claiming they were also underage when Ava sent them inappropriate messages. They are providing video of what appears to be Snapchat DMs and explicit Discord voice chats. Okay, this is also interesting too, because there were multiple people and people were, I'm, I'm not saying it didn't happen. There's a very high chance that Ava sent messages to people for sure. I would like to see the proof of it, obviously. And if it happened, it's super gross, right? But there's something here that could be true. And I did see a conversation with Ava and like, I think the 14 year old boy, but I could be wrong. I don't know if it's real though. That's the problem is I don't know if any of these are real. So spreading the misinformation is weird, but I don't know what's real and what isn't real. And there were some messages I saw that were super inappropriate. Like, let me send you a birthday gift. I miss you. You're keeping me up. I love you. And then like a joke. And I just don't know what's real. And that's the problem is like, I, I, I can't, yeah, I can't know. And I think that's where we're all struggling because if it's real, it's horrible. If it's not real, then it's just another hit piece, right? Which is very common on the internet. From group messages. And in the meantime, you have all these different things all over the place getting millions and millions of views. You have people arguing about what's real or not, which is also why we've seen people both in support of and against Ava or Mr. Beast here pressuring them to speak on this. Especially because, again, you have people like Jake the Viking, who used to be a part of Mr. B's crew, saying things like Jimmy knew. And actually, like, really hitting on how everything's been developing in real time, we have a last second update right before we were up. Feels weird that Jimmy would know and not just take Ava out of the running automatically. Or maybe Jimmy knew and didn't care because it was the bubble at the time. I don't know. Loading. Ava Chris Tyson just tweeted, I would like to apologize for any of my past behavior or comments if it hurt or offended anyone. It was not my intent. Seeing recent events, we've mutually decided it's best I permanently step away from all things Mr. Beast and social media to focus on my family and mental health. So for now, that's where we're going to end this today. But of course, with all... See, this is interesting because what an interesting message to put out. I would like to apologize for any of my past behavior or comments if it hurt or offended anyone. That's weird. It was not my intent. That feels like she's only commenting on like maybe some joke she made. But like she couldn't possibly, this couldn't possibly be the, the statement she puts out for underage messaging a child. Like this can't possibly be the apology. Mr. I feel like Mr. Beast's brand cannot allow this to be the response. So then is she kind of giving this response as if to say, hey, I made some shitty jokes, but I did not slide into someone's DMs. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it was not my intent. It, I'm not really sure what this is. This is a very PR statement and I don't really like it very much. I almost would have preferred it if she didn't say anything because this just makes me have more questions. It 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 makes her look more guilty if I'm going to be honest. See how talking makes you look more guilty? Because now you had an opportunity to say something and you didn't say anything. I would like to apologize for any of my past behavior or comments if it hurts or offends. Are you talking about a joke? That's, that's, this is the apology you make when you make a bad joke. This is not the apology you make if you've slid into a minor's DMs. So I don't know what to do with that. What am I supposed to do with this information? Did she slide into a minor's DMs or not? Because if she did, this is a horrible fucking apology. And it's not even an apology that's needed. It's literally like a, a, a deep understanding of why these things happen in the first place. And I really do think my theory is possibly correct. There's a lot of stuntedness on the internet that exists because in so many ways, we stay young because this is a very young job. Entertainment's a young job. You know, being a singer is a pretty young job. You stay youthful in entertainment because you're entertaining the masses and the masses who are spending the most money are probably more younger than older. And so you're, you stay young. It doesn't mean that you're not aging. It doesn't mean that you aren't actually much older. So I did see an update to the Ava story about the text messages that people were sharing allegedly from her, but I couldn't find any verification for it. And even Twitter had a community note saying that they were wrong. So I'm a little confused on why people were running with the text messages as if, as if they were true. And Philip DeFranco uh, didn't cover them. So I'm assuming that's because he can't find any uh, proof that they're real either. I'm not finding any proof that they're real. 
I'm finding a lot of speculation and I'm finding a lot of humor. The, the text messages that I saw that were the most concerning from allegedly Ava, allegedly, allegedly, was she was flirting with a 14 year old who she wanted to buy birthday gifts for. And the text messages were incredibly gross. They were like, I'm staying up thinking about you. How old are you turning 14? Um, look at my Snapchat. I sent you something. It was very like gross. Um, I could spoil you, but I couldn't find any verification for these messages. And even though 4chan losers dug them up, it's fine. I just can't find the proof. And the last thing I want to do is push a narrative that this could be true when Ava literally said that she doesn't have any connection to like these, she said that she did not do these things. And even the alleged victim said he didn't feel this way. So he was 14 at the time. And Ava, I think was 20. So I don't think she, she's not taking responsibility. So here's the update because there is an update her saying she did not groom anybody. And I think that's really important. So let's go ahead and watch it. This is uh, Philip DeFranco covering it. And I think this is important because Phil will do a lot of the verification um, like requirements that I just can't do on my own as a random YouTuber. I just, I don't trust myself to verify text messages. So I feel like Phil and other people will do that work and I haven't seen it yet. So if you guys have updates, let me know. But here is the update to the story from yesterday. Yo, this Ava Chris Tyson, Mr. Beast situation appears to just be getting messier and worse by the minute. Now, if you didn't see our full dive into this situation yesterday, I'm gonna link to it down below. There's a, there's a lot of ground to cover there. Right? There were multiple different accusations and controversies. Right? But yesterday, just before we put out the show, and one of the last things we put into the show was that Ava put out a general apology, saying I would like to apologize for any of my past behavior or comments. Oh, I'm so sorry. Hold on, before we continue, I got a super chat from Bernie. Thank you. Bernie's villain arc started when he got horse teeth. He looks like a Michelin man. He looks like a wax candle melting bernie we love your heart on and of hate for uh for boogie <laughs> thank you for the super chat and ingrid says philly d has a whole team which i think is important here philly d does have a whole team which means he can do research into whether or not these things are true versus i don't think i can do that right i don't have that kind of like i tried my best but i didn't find anything that verified those text messages so here's what the update is according to phil if it hurt or offended anyone, it was not my intent. So just, okay, Ava said, I would like to apologize for any of my past behavior or comments. If it hurt or offended anyone, it was not my intention. Seeing recent events where we've mutually decided it's best I permanently step away from all things Mr. Beast and social media to focus on my family and mental health, right? We covered this yesterday. And seeing recent events, we've mutually decided it's best I permanently step away from all things Mr. Beast and social media to focus on my family and mental health, which resulted in a ton of different reactions, though the vast majority appear to be disgusted or angry. But then, to give the first update here, a few hours after posting that, she followed up by flat out asserting that, quote, I never groomed anyone. The person who gets brought up in these accusations, Lava GS, has vocally supported that they are false. Adding, having said that, I humbly apologize to anyone I have hurt with my unacceptable social media posts, past actions, and to those who may feel betrayed by how I used to act on online. In closing, to lump these two factors together to create a narrative that my behavior extended beyond bad, edgy jokes is disgusting and did not happen. In past years, I have learned that my old humor is not acceptable. I cannot change who I was, but I can continue to work on myself. Okay, hold on. To lump those two factors together to create a narrative that my behavior extended past or beyond bad, edgy jokes is disgusting. And I'm worried about this, obviously, because Ava is trans and a lot of people have tried to discredit her and say she was disgusting from day one. And so I'm very concerned and I do not trust the transphobes to talk about the story. Everybody's dead naming her or at least like purposely not calling her Ava. I think people are acting very gross around the story itself, so I don't trust them. Obviously, if she was inappropriate with minors, that's not good and we should talk about that. I also think there's a lot of layers to the story in which it's making people's bias come out further. So again, I'm always here to try to find the nuance. Um, there is some controversy with the fact that she liked a lot of artists. I know lots of people feel, feel very passionately about that. Look, I'm not fan myself and at the same time i know there are a little bit of new nuances with because of how people and what people define as so some people feel like belle delphine creates a lot of work obviously that's not true belle delphine's in her 20s is drawn depictions of younger people super gross super not cool at the same time people in the anime world have been associated with liking things along those lines that i think aren't exactly lucky but could be long i don't know if chris liked or see, I just did it right now. Ava Chris liked specifically, or did she like an artist that happened to do Lolly? Or I'm a little confused about the details. Either way, 
pretty fucking gross. Okay, Beza says, I'm critical of Shade Man and Ava buying his work because he draws real children, not just characters like Okay, then I agree with that super bad, like super bad. I wonder, does she make a comment on that? Because right now she's only talking about the edgy jokes, which, okay, if you want to stop adults from making edgy joke with kids, you got to figure out every... Like you gotta, you gotta figure out COD lobbies, Fortnite lobbies. You gotta, you gotta really work on the gaming communities because I don't know if you know this, but adults are making edgy jokes with your kids every day if your kids are in chat rooms. So I have no idea if people are being dead serious that they want zero edgy jokes between adults and kids because I agree with you. Kids shouldn't be on the internet. But I doubt any of these companies and any of these parents are going to take their kids out of those lobbies. If your minor child is in a COD lobby, they are absolutely exchanging inappropriate jokes with adults. And I don't even know how this is in a conversation. Like, why are you talking about Ava when all of the straight men in these gaming communities are absolutely making inappropriate jokes with kids? Because they're all making inappropriate jokes with kids. They're playing with children. So I don't even know what we're talking. That's why I feel like it's fake outrage. Because you cannot be serious. Like, you cannot be serious. Okay? Like, people are absolutely making jokes. C balls, vagina jokes, absolutely making jokes. And if anybody, like, you have not been in a lobby, it, don't fuck with me, bro. Okay? I've been in enough of those lobbies to be like, damn, this is rated R. But also, it is what it is. Okay? So let's keep going with the update. Here's I've learned that my old humor is not acceptable. I cannot change who I was, but I can... Oh, yeah. And that guy who drew Keemstar's daughter, honestly, bro, in all, like prison continue to work on myself i don't want these accusations to impact the hundreds of people who work at mr beast which is why i have stepped away and there we actually saw lava replying to her post saying i'm sorry that people are making up lies with my name in them i hope everyone sees the truth soon you never did anything wrong to me nothing inappropriate so this is the victim allegedly i'm sorry that people are making up lies with my name in them I hope everyone can see the truth. You never did anything wrong to me. Nothing inappropriate between us ever happened. And between us. And while you saw some agreeing with what Lava said there, you also had others saying no. We're kind of having a version of the argument that Moist Critical had when we talked about him yesterday. And in fact, he posted another video last night where he talks a lot about Lava's defense of Ava. And I'm not trying to be some kind of armchair psychologist because I'm just, at the end of the day, a little reptile brain idiot. But I really do feel like in a situation like this, it's very difficult to process just how inappropriate or unacceptable something was when you lived it. But in reality, no child should have this kind of relationship with an adult where you're joking about sending nudes to a minor. Okay, I agree with this. I think there, th I th agree with this. There's something here that feels like a lie though. Something here feels like a lie, but I don't know what it is. My neurodivergent bat sense is going off. Where I'm like, mm, I agree with this. I just know too many guys who send each other dick pics as like a prank to be like not surprised that guys are degenerates like boys are degenerate like they're degenerate little vile moth creatures that all hang out in the dark and like show each other's dicks to each other like there's a whole group of gamer boys that are just degenerate and there's something about that boy bubble that i think is really interesting and i think it brings out the worst because it has no discipline or discernment so I just want to make sure, like, are we talking about that bubble? Because that bubble's weird. I'm not saying they're sending their dicks to kids, but I'm saying, like, they they absolutely are fucking weird. But also, it's like, there's some line here that feels, mm, I want to explore it more. But also, again, there's too much transphobia mixed in with this story for me to trust anyone who's telling. I just want the facts. And I feel like there's not enough facts and there's a lot of transphobia happening. Okay? With that said... I think kids shouldn't be on the internet. My stance is that children shouldn't even be in online gaming like forums. I don't think they should be online. I don't think they should be commenting on people's videos. Or making edgy jokes about coming for America. So while the person here might not feel like a victim, it really is completely unacceptable that Ava Tyson would be communicating with them like this. It really is. With that, then actually seeming to get Lava's attention because shortly after that video went live, Lava posted on X, Moist, hey, I just saw your video. I would love to chat in DMs to maybe clarify some points you made in the video. So like Lava reached out and they're an adult now, right? So a lot of this is also interesting because they are an adult. And so like, would you, what if they went to a therapist and they got examined and the therapist is like, they definitely weren't groomed. Would you guys believe it then? Like nobody in this story has proven that anything bad has happened yet 
though I think there's some questionable actions that have happened for sure. And then the person that's allegedly the victim is like, I'm an adult now and I'm good bros. So obviously that's also important. But then at what point do we have a conversation about, you know, who gets to define what was morally truly bad here when morals are subjective, right? video. So, so far, as of recording, we haven't seen anything come from that. Though this also, as Moist himself, has been on the defense for another reason. Right? With that, connected to that whole other aspect of the situation where you had a lot of creators facing a lot of heat for not immediately chiming in. With a number of critics saying a combo of either you're too scared to piss off Mr. Beast because you want that collab, or you're trying to avoid talking about Ava even though you came for Dr. Disrespect's throat when the allegations against him came out. Though also, there you had many, including Moist himself, saying, you know, he actually did chime in on the Ava situation pretty early. But this also, as he's hardly the only one getting attacked over this. In fact, we're situations like this and like what a silly thing see that's what i mean the fact that the audience is like why haven't you talked about this yet i don't trust any of you you sound crazy like audience members that are demanding youtubers talk about things are crazy you are all insane you need fucking therapy if you are going to the internet for content creators to give their opinion on things and you're like if you don't make a statement you're a bad person you need to go to therapy therapy you know what i never think you know what I never think as a 35 year old woman who's been to therapy? Hmm, I wonder what Charlie has to say about this because it's very important he says something. No, I go see what Charlie has to say about something because I'm curious, not because it fucking matters. And the fact that people are sitting here being like, you need to comment on this, this is important. Y'all are stroking your narcissistic egos so big. You're literally putting the weight of the world on content creators and then you're like, I wonder why the world's a mess because you're literally looking for Charlie and Pokimane and all these, grow the fuck up. Absolutely inappropriate. That's just so insane to me. Bernie with the super chat says, you know the guy who sends dick pics to other guys as a prank? You know a guy, I, I know so many people. It's insane. Bro, maybe it's because boys just tell me things, but I, absolutely. There's whole groups of friends that do that. It's a whole thing, absolutely, absolutely. I know a lot of things. I know YouTubers who have commissioned adjacent art. I know are I know YouTubers. I know so many people because they just tell me things and I'm just sitting here like, why are you telling me this? And I don't talk to those people anymore. Okay. Well, I don't talk to the people who who commission anything lolly adjacent. I don't have any of my anyone in my life that does lolly adjacent things. Okay, for the record. Nobody in my life, myself included, is interested in lolly, as far as I know. But in terms of sending dick pics, yes, I have friends in my life that like to send their guy friends dick pics. I don't know. I don't fucking know what it is. It's fine, I guess. You do you. Okay. But I think, you know, engaging in lolly, uh, buying lolly adjacent things is bad. Real lolly. Okay. I think that's bad. Buying Belle Delphine's OnlyFans is none of my business. It's just people call that lolly. And just for the record, that's not lolly. So again, I'm just being very extra careful about language because I'm not sure what people mean when they say things. And I know this is true because we're already dealing with transphobes that are talking about the reason Ava is dangerous is because Ava doesn't know what gender she is. So I just don't know what people are talking about when we cover this story. And push back all over the place. Are you have big creators like Ludwig responding to calls to respond by saying, my video on Doc literally came out two days after Charlie's, not immediately after information came out. Saying I waited for Doc's statement on Twitter and on Steam and his removal from Midnight Society. And adding, I'm literally in Paris with my family. Why y'all motherfuckers so horny for a statement? Also, we're seeing a number of those who did speak out still being hit. With a number of people still going after Pokemon and Valkyrie, who we talked about yesterday. We're seeing many shifting their criticism from you aren't talking about this to you didn't go in against Ava enough. Or with people going back to when Pokey said, yuck, and Ray said Dr. Disgusting after the whole Dr. Disrespect situation. Though there you saw a good number of people defending them, noting that their responses came a few days after the Dr. Disrespect allegations had already been stewing and adding. The way people are treating Valkyrie and Pokemon over this Ava situation makes me so sad. This happened in one day? I still don't fully know what the fuck is going on. And going on to say, creators didn't speak up against Dr. Disrespect until he made a statement himself. Ray and Pokey made statements condemning the behavior. What more? Hold on. Have you guys seen the movie Waiting? It's based off a book. Have you guys seen that movie with Ryan Reynolds? There's a prank they do where you turn around and you're doing like the bat and it's like your balls and your dick. Okay, guys, there's a whole group of millennials. I don't know if Gen Zers are doing it as much, but millennial humor is absolutely dick adjacent. Okay, you like prank your friend by being like, hey, turn around and look at this. And it's like your dick. And it's like, <laughs> yes, there's a whole bubble that does this. They even have movies based off of pranks associated with like tr getting your guys to look at your dick. Okay, and then they go, ew, gross. The world doesn't revolve around you and the only thing you know, okay? Your bubble is in the world's bubble. There are 8 billion people on this planet, 
plenty of them are pranking each other by showing each other's dicks. Okay. Or do you want? We also saw Ray defending herself, saying she felt pressure to put out a tweet as soon as possible, saying her mentions were being swarmed, that large creators mm -hmm. were calling people out, saying she had to take a break from moving in order to look into the situation, and adding, I equally called both Dr. D and Ava disgusting after their statements. But with all that said, it's gonna be very interesting to see what happens from here. And I say that not only because some have alleged that there's gonna be more that comes out, but also because the mainstream media has now latched onto this story. With the BBC, Sky News, Damn. and Forbes, just to mm -hmm. name a few, covering this today. With also part of this seeming to be more into going after Mr. Beast. There's people posting old clips of him that are racking up views, doing things like uh, dropping a homophobic slur. There's also a clip where it appears that he asked someone if they'd put their dick inside Bad Baby, with people saying that she would have been 14 at the time. But again, all of this has been developing and evolving. And for now, we're gonna have to wait to see what comes from all this. And in the So the fact that Phil isn't covering the text messages that are going around on Twitter, and, and it, it just says to me that they're probably fake. And given that the Twitter has a community um, correction on it, like a community message saying like, hey, these have not been proven. I think is really important. Look, I don't want to spread rumors. I don't think any of us, well, maybe some of you, because you're malicious bitches, want to spread rumors that somebody's a predator or engaging with kids. Keem's already done this multiple times. How dare he make this attempt again? Remember that Keemstar has already falsely accused the wrong person of being a PDF file, which was not true. And the last thing we want to do is do it again. So be very careful with these rumors. Dr. Disrespect admitted to the crime. Nobody had to guess. Dr. Disrespect admitted, though he was never con convicted for the crime, he did say he flirted or he engaged in intimate or possibly inappropriate conversations with a minor, right? And he didn't go into details like Ava did and said, I was making edgy jokes, which I think has a place on the internet that has occurred, right? I think it's important for us to be more than patient with this story because I just don't think we have all the data. So I have no conclusion. I don't know if Ava is innocent or not innocent, but based off the data, we'll have to wait and see. And I think that's really important given how serious of an allegation this is. And I think we should be that cautious moving forward in general, right? Mimi says, do you think this is partially manufactured drama? It doesn't feel quite um, organic. I don't know if that's the right word. Yeah, I do. I think there's always misinformation in drama because people just want the clickbait. They want to be able to say that their theories are true. It's okay to speculate, but say it's a speculation. Stop acting like you're sitting on objective truth when you don't know. You don't know. You don't know that these people are engaging in in uh, predatory behavior with people. And you've got to be really cautious about those kinds of allegations. You know, and I just think people are way too happy to attack people because they're trans. And I and I don't know. Like, I just don't know what's going on. And so until we have more data, I can't say either way personally. And again, and this is so important you got to come to your own conclusions and you've got to come to them with the right amount of data. Otherwise, you're just going to come to biased conclusions, which I know we're all, we all suffer from bias, but too many people are transphobic in this conversation. And I don't trust any of the transphobes to have a clear answer or reaction to this. Remember that Andrew Tate, who has admitted to having sex with a child, literally had the audacity to say Ava was gross for being trans. And of course she's a predator because she's trans. Andrew Tate has already had sex with a child and admitted it. So why are we even having a conversation with a grown up who admitted to having sex with a kid and he has the audacity to try to judge trans people? Why do we care what he has to say about any of this? I'm just fine, yet all I do is whine Not to you in my mind, cause I know I don't make sense I've been nothing but blessed So why's my life a mess? Please tell me, cause I'm sick of thinking Yeah, I'm sick of reaching out for the truth And living life as a fool Dun, 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 dun. 